Um, hello, how's everybody doing? Enjoying the conference so far? Um, yeah, I know I'm the only thing standing between uh, you and lunch, so I promise I'll make my presentation as brief as possible. Um, yeah, hello, or bonjour, as uh, they say uh, around these places. I'm Andre Antal. Uh, I come from uh, the beautiful city of Bucharest in, uh, in Romania. I'm a front-end engineer, and yeah, I'm in love with like web technology since I ever, since uh, I wrote my very first line of, of, uh, of job, uh, JavaScript. Now I work with Angular a lot, and uh, in my free time, I organize the local uh, meetup group, uh, the local Angular meetup group in, uh, in Bucharest. We, you know, get around to speak about, like, you know, uh, the new, all the new fancy stuff that's coming out, and also uh, get the opportunity to talk with people to see, like, you know, the issues they're facing and, um, you know, the interesting projects that they're doing. So, if you want to know what's going on with the web community in this part of the world, in that part of the world, uh, yeah, we have a Twitter account and a Facebook page for discussion, so, yeah. Um, I'm super excited to uh, talk about um, uh, Angular Elements today, especially because they're considered kind of like a mythical uh, creature. Like, a, a lot of people have heard about it, but, you know, very few people have actually seen them in action, and even fewer people actually got to take them for, for test drive. So, um, yeah, and also uh, a word of caution, what I'm about to show you today is still uh, in the early alpha experimental phase. So the code, you know, you'll see some code today and it will work today or at least two days when I uh, finish my slides. But if you come back like in two or three months from now, uh, the APIs might not be exactly the same, right? So consider yourselves uh, warned, yeah? Okay. So, um, Last year, uh, at the end of last year, Rob, Rob Ronald, which is um, uh, one of the Angular team uh, members, uh, had a few talks where he introduced Angular Labs, right? Angular Labs is the playground for uh, the Angular team to experiment with all sorts of new features uh, uh, for Angular, like some more eccentric than, uh, than the other, right? And share them with the community, right? Is there a way to be transparent with the community and share what they're doing for, for Angular, right? Which, which I think is, is uh, super awesome, right? And what we're go gonna talk about today is exactly under this, uh, under this umbrella, right? But another point Rob made during his talks is that Angular as it stands now, uh, yeah, there's actually no excuse to not even consider uh, Angular for your, for your next project, right? So, of course, this is a paraphrase, but what he's trying to say is that Angular has reached a very, very good maturity level, right? It's uh, already been through uh, three leading cycles, right, number of, uh, num numerous issues fixed, a lot of features added, right? And we're at an Angular conference. I don't have to uh, sell you uh, Angular, like, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? But, um, it might get tricky, you know, when you're, get, when you're uh, trying to take Angular out of that uh, complete uh, single page application uh, scenario, right? And, and one of the things Rob pointed out is that um, it's difficult to take, uh, you know, your components, right, the components that you write, and use them outside of the Angular, right, outside, outside of the Angular templates, right? And it's, if you think about it, it's quite a shame because Angular components are a big bulk of what we write today in our Angular applications, right? And, and think about, like, all the small, uh, right, the presentational or dumb components, how they're uh, sometimes referred to, like, think about all, the, all those components, uh, you know, you could take them, maybe you want to take them out of your Angular application and use them in your, uh, you know, HTML, static HTML page or your React app or your Vue app, right, to, to avoid a rewrite, right? So that would be, that would be awesome to do. But uh, it, as it turns out, it's not a very, it's not impossible, but it's n definitely not a trivial uh, task, uh, task to do, right? So, why would you want to take right? I, I mean, we talked about why would you want to take um, why would you want to take your your components right out of your Angular uh, application, right? So, who here has written a, a date picker more or less from from scratch throughout his career, right? Okay, a few of you, right? So, my fellow developers, you are not alone, right? So, there's a lot of people actually that keep on rewriting uh, stuff, like like the date picker, right? So. Uh, this screenshot is taken four days ago, so that number might actually be higher. But the number is so high because a lot of people are rewriting, um, you know, writing their date picker and they're writing an adapter for React and an adapter for Angular and an adapter for Vue and so on and so forth, right? So that it works in all of these, uh, in all of these frameworks, right? And I'm not saying that sh there should be one date picker, but I'm probably, uh, you know, you can probably spot that this is kind of a wasted, uh, kind of a wasted effort, right? Um, 
So one solution, you know, that we come up with, one tool that we, we can use to uh, avoid this, right, is, is, web, compo is uh, uh, web components, right? So uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with, with web components, uh, web components are a set of uh, standards, right, that allow you to write custom native elements, right, and use them in your application without the need of a framework, without anything, right, just relying on the plain uh, on the plain br on the plain browser, right? So it's a set of four standards. Actually, only three are uh, more or less important. I'm not going to go like due to time constraints. I'm not going to go too much into detail about what uh, web components are. But I highly encourage if you haven't uh, if you didn't have the opportunity to play around with them, I highly encourage you to uh, to to take a look uh, to take a look. They're a really 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 uh, big topic uh, right now in in uh, you know, web development, and they're the only you know they're the 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 way to uh, develop custom uh, native elements in, in, in web right now, right? And if some of the terms don't seem right, uh, don't worry, this was my, uh, my reaction as well. So um, what web components allow you to do, right, is to write your, your custom element and use it, right, in, in any, any application like this, right? Just take the tag, uh, the tag, put it in your uh, application, and the browser takes care of the rest, right? And if you think about it, right, it's what we're doing with Angular, com with compo with Angular components, right? We're specifying the selector and using that selector in any other components, right? And Angular takes care of, you know, putting the component uh, content there, right? And it's the reason why, for example, we're using uh, uh, Angular components and the reason why we should use web components as well, right, is that it enables us to uh, encapsulate everything about that component, right? It encapsulate, um, you know, how it looks, how it's styled, right? Make sure that those styles don't leak into other uh, parts of the, the application, right? The logic. So the consumer of a web component, right, doesn't need to know anything about its internal workings, right? You're just exposing. Uh, you know, attributes and inputs and, uh, and outputs, right, in the end. So, so that's it. So that's a really, really big win, right? Y your consumer doesn't need to know uh, anything about um, uh, the web component except for how it's used, right? So, and except for the fact that you can use it like with any other, uh, any other web, uh, you know, DOM element, whatever, like, like, like a button or an input, right? Anybody can use, uh, knows how to use a button or, or an input, right? And if you look across the uh, compatibility or implementation state of these this standards, you can see that it's pretty green uh, across the board, right? Either being already implemented in browsers or behind, uh, all, yeah, uh, or behind reasonably sized polyfill, right? So you're okay to develop web components today and use them in, in modern in modern browser, right? And web components. Uh, on the other hand, web components work out of the box with with, uh, with Angular, right? You can take your web component and just stick it in any uh, uh, component template, right? And it should it should work um, it should work out of the box, right? And this is definitely by by design, right? This is not an accident, and we'll come back to this idea um, uh, later on in, in in this in this presentation, right? But you can do like uh, bind to the events, bind to properties. It works like any uh, other DOM element, right? So why isn't uh, right? Why isn't this? Why isn't everybody doing this already, right? If it's such a good idea and it has all these benefits, well, as it turns out, web components, the app, web components API, is low level, like really low level. So if you cross that trivial, uh, you know, your trivial element threshold. Uh, you start writing a lot, a lot of code, right? You have to set up all the things, like all the bindings, all the, like everything, and, and you end up with a lot of boilerplate uh, code, right? So that's why they're not already uh, super mainstream, right? And other solutions to fix this already emerged. Like for example, the the Polymer project, right, which is a project from from Google. Uh, their aim is to sprinkle some sugar over these APIs, right? Made them more uh, friendly, right? More developer, uh, more developer friendly, right? And although it's uh, you know a really awesome projects and you know its existence is justified by a number of um, an enough number of, of valid um, use cases, when compared to Angular in terms of feature set, it still lags behind, right? I mean. You want to use Angular, maybe you want to use forms, maybe you want to use, um, you know, dependency injection, which is really, uh, really awesome, right? Polymer doesn't exactly come uh, with this out of the box. And it also has some, uh, you know, uh, ways of doing things that might not be that, um, you know, um, uh, intuitive, like, for example, uh, making an uh, HS request uh, from an uh, HTML element, right? What? Anyway, uh, but in the end, why would you want to use 
another, why would you want to learn another widget API, right? Another, yet another uh, framework or library, right? It, wouldn't it be awesome if we could use for this scenario, right, to, to, to have the, the, the power uh, web components give us, but still use Angular, right? That's what we're aiming. Well, I'm coming back to this idea, right? The Angular components are not that easy to do. Well, as it turns out, the Angular team, right, under the, um, um, under the Angular Labs umbrella is actually, uh, trying to fix exactly this problem, right? So, if I got your, if uh, I didn't have your attention uh, up until now, I want your attention from now on because this is where things get interesting, right? Because I'm about to introduce to you Angular Elements, or um, as they're marketed, Angular Components packaged as uh, Web Components, right? So, how does this work? You have, you write your average Angular component, right? And then Angular, like, does some black magic to that component, and it packages it uh, as a web component that you can use in any other application without needing Angular, right? It's, it's Angular on the inside, but on the outside, you just see it as a regular web component. You won't even know it's Angular, right? And this transition between an Angular component and a web component is made easy, it's, it, 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 it's made simpler, right? Because the bridge between the two APIs there's like a one-to-one -one, uh, map, almost one-to-one -one mapping, right? I mean, inputs will map to uh, properties, host bindings, to attributes, outputs, to events, and all the lifecycle hooks will work as you, as you expect them, right? So um, it's, it's no uh, surprise that the Angular team has made it super clear that at the top of their um, you know, mission statement is the fact that they want to have as much compatibility as possible with the web standards, right? And this is where it starts to, uh, to pay off, right? So after you've written your component and Angular does its magic, what you're left with is, is a small bundle, j small uh, bundle JS file uh, that you will need to include in your app, right? In your any app, right? Even Angular, right? It, it, uh, you might think it doesn't make sense to use um, an Angular element inside an, an Angular uh, um, uh, application, but yeah, you can use it in your like static HTML or even React or, or Vue, right? And they're self-bootstrapping, right? You just include this bundle file and the browser takes care of the rest, right? You just have to use, actually use the element, right? There's no special bootstrapping or any other function that you need to write or interact with. You just put the JS file, use the element in your markup, and that's it, right? So. To recap, uh, this is your average component, right? Nothing on this slide should be as a surprise to at least people who have um, uh, written a bit of, of Angular, right? It's just like a regular component. You have inputs, outputs, bindings. Uh, well, maybe there's this like encapsulation thingy that I'm going to talk about uh, later. But other than that, it's your average, uh, it's your average component, right? You take this component and you put it in a module, right? Again, it's your average module with like just small, uh, small uh, difference. Uh, the fact that we have an, um, we override the ng bootstrap, um, the ng bootstrap method, right? This is because we want to bootstrap this method, but we don't have a bootstrap array, right? So we need to tell this. I know at this point this looks a bit ugly, but I'm pretty sure by the end, uh, by the end of the time, Angular components become, um, you know, um, included in the Angular framework, this will look uh, better. But I'm just showing you how things are uh, right now, right? So you've written your component, you created a, mo a module, right? And then uh, you need to use like a special function that's called registered as custom elements, which is inside the Angular elements package, right? So this is the new thing, right? The Angular, uh, the Angular elements package, right? That exposes this, um, uh, this method, right? And you give, it, you give it the module and you just bootstrap that module, right? And Angular will take care of, you know, making that uh, really awesome bundle that uh, you can use in your app, right? So in the end, this is how it, would, it will work. You just take the, the JS file, put it in your application, and use your component. There's no need for Angular to be on that page, right? So, yeah. And in the end, again, this is not necessarily how the API looks right now, but this is how I'm imagining things will be in the end, right? You will have like a small mini Angular thingy, right? Because uh, if you have multiple uh, custom components, you maybe don't want them, all of them to be bundled with you know, everything. So uh, this is how I I'm, I'm, I'm think the future might, might, might look, right? And I know to some of you, this looks familiar, right? You, you've seen this pattern before, right? Well, as it turns out, we've been doing this for quite some time. This is pretty similar to the way we used to, to, we, uh, used to use uh, jQuery, uh, uh, jQuery plugins, right? And uh, this, you know, reminds me of a story of a friend that, um, you know, was doing a project and he asked me, uh, hey, Andre, do you know 
uh, way I can have a video player in my uh, application and uh, you know when I click on it it go it comes up in a pop-up and, and I said yeah sure and this is the first thing I did right like look up jQuery plugin video model and here's your jQuery plugin that does exactly this right so I'm guessing this is uh, the place where, where uh, this idea of uh, Angular components is, is going, right? It's definitely not for building whole applications, right? You have Angular for that. But in terms of like, you know, having these small chunks of, uh, you know, these small components uh, with, with, you know, very good uh, functionality that you can just put in your uh, application, I think this is where we're, where we're heading, right? Yeah, okay, wish me luck. So, um, let me introduce you to my uh, awesome, really awesome component right here. It's like a small, uh, just a small rating app. You just click how many circles you want to give a certain item. So if we really look, go over the code, don't worry about implementation details, right? I just wanted to show you that for this component, I'm using, uh, you know, inputs, I'm using outputs, I'm using lifecycle hooks. I'm, I'm even injecting a service here. I'm using a child component, right, which is here. Uh, you, you can see the service as well. I'm using like what you would expect I would use when, ang when using uh, Angular, right? So you have your module. Now you have your, your module, right? And um, one important step is that, you know, the component that you want to expose as, as an Angular element, like as, as a web component, it needs to be in the entry uh, entry component um, array, right? This is, um, uh, you know, the array is usually used when you want to have um, dynamic components in your, in your application, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is the module that I've been talking about, um, right? You include your providers, you declare your components, and in the end, you just, uh, you know, call this method, right, register as custom elements, uh, give it an array of components that you want to compile as uh, web components, and yeah, just let Angular, you know, bootstrap, because we need, we need a platform, right, to do, like, to, to uh, bootstrap any, uh, any Angular applications, right, but this time we, we just bootstrap that module, right, so we're not running an application, right, what I, what I built here is just a project specially designed for this, right, to give me uh, the web, uh, give me the web component, right? I'm pretty sure there are ways that you can include a flow in your big Angular application to, you know, have your, have your big application and some build step that uh, can only, uh, you know, take out uh, the custom elements that you want, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, and um, what you do in the end, you, you uh, build, right? So I have, I have a, a command for this, right? I just hit build, I wait for a bit, Catch my breath, okay? And what you're left with, right, in the, this file is exactly this uh, main.js uh, file, right, which is, you know, a lot of code, but what you can do with this, with this bundle file is actually included, right, in any application, right? This is an index.html, and the only script tag, uh, the only functional script tag is this, right? You don't have Angular, we don't have anything, right? And this is the end result, right? So if it's not super spectacular, actually let me comment some code uh, from here. Uh, before that, let me actually show you how this looks, right? It's, right, it, uh, I should maybe increase this. Yeah, right, so this is your custom, right, your custom component. It's, it's, actually used as a custom, a custom uh, element, right? You can, um, right, you can select it, right? Right, and you can like set the rating maybe uh, equals like four, let's see, zero, right? So it interacts, uh, you know, you can interact both ways with this, uh, with this component, right? And let me just, very quickly comment out some code. It's just JavaScript. I'm just, you know, getting this, uh, getting this component and hooking it up, um, you know, hooking up an add events li uh, event listener on, on the output that is um, exposed, right? And if I save and if I refresh and I maybe zoom in, right? You can see that uh, the Angular component, right? The Angular component package as a web component, right? Affects the web page, right? I'm clicking on, um, I'm clicking on the component, and this is outside of the, compo the component, right? So I have an event hooked up to this, and it, it reacts, right? And I can also 
you know, pass in data to the component, right? This is a button that when I will click it, it will give it a maximum, a maximum rating, right? So, yeah. And if you're still not impressed, right? Well, the next thing you can do is actually go to your React team, right? And uh, interrupt their 200 day uh, debate about what uh, CSS in JavaScript uh, library to use, right? And um, take this, uh, you know, take this bundle file uh, to them and ask them to use it uh, in their application, right? So this is, right, you just include, uh, you just include the main uh, bundle file, right? You link it uh, in, a, in a script tag and you use the custom component. Like there's nothing else you need to do. You just need to put the tag there, right? And it works, oh, let me go to the React app, right? And it works exactly as the previous example, right? I just put two lines to see that this is uh, the component land and everything outside of it is a React land, right? So yeah, it, this is your Angular written component working in a React app, right? You can see the number here. Uh, working, right? And it's, you can also pass it in data and so on and so forth, right? And I'm not doing anything special. I'm just putting, I'm just putting this component inside React code. And well, there's this small, tiny bit of thing you need to do, uh, you know, to add a, an event listener, right? It doesn't work that well. And there's like a really big discussion about why, uh, you know, why this is happening. I recommend you to read it, to read it. But yeah, you get the idea. And <laughs> Right, this was React, but you can also do it in Vue.js, right? And you can, all, you can see uh, where I'm going, right? You could just, it's the same scenario. You take your bundle, uh, your, your uh, compiled component, you include it as a, script, as a script tag, and then you can use it. This is like Vue.js, right? And you can use it in, um, in um, right? It, 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 it interacts with, with, okay, the Vue uh, APIs, right? It binds to data and, and events, but you can use it like you would with a React app as well, right? So it, it works exactly the, the same, right? Okay, that went well. Um, and it, as it turns out, the, the Google team isn't the only one that's thinking about this, right? The, um, um, the um, Ionic, uh, Ionic team uh, already has uh, developed something uh, very similar. It's called Stencil, and I know Adam Bradley is having a presentation later on, so if you catch him around, uh, ask him about this. This is really, really, uh, really awesome. And um, it's the similar idea. You just write a component in, in, in you know, in, in a better, um, um, you know, in a more familiar uh, code and in, in a more abstract uh, abstract way, right? And it gets, everything gets packaged as a web component, right? And there's also another alternative, which is, you know, the code looks more like a, um, a React uh, uh, component. Uh, the solution is called SkateJS, but it's doing basically the same thing. You just write your component in, um, you know, in some way and it gets, com it gets compiled too. And even, uh, Okay, this is challenging. Even the creator of Vue, even you, uh, is actually announced that Vue are uh, integrating this functionality into their CLI, right? So as it looks, everybody's jumping board this, uh, this ship, right? So what's next? Well, there's one detail I ha actually haven't changed, I have actually haven't shared with you, right? The fact that the bundle size is really big, like uh, just for that uh, small component that I showed you, the bundle size goes up to around a megabyte. Well, okay, unminified and uh, uncommented, but that's, I think, the first thing that the, the Angular team needs to focus, right, to bring, to bring that bundle size down, and I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll do it, right? And if we look at the, the roadmap for uh, Angular 6.0, well, if we look, we look at it, we can see that you know, it's due March 28 and 0% complete. Oh, they have enough time, right? It's not like they missed the shipping deadline before, right? Um, but we can see that Angular elements are targeted for release in 6.0, in, uh, 6 right? At least an, at an MVP level. And if you look a bit in, in the detail, um, the first thing that they want to do is actually integrate uh, Angular elements into their uh, Angular I.O. page, right? Angular I.O. also known as um, the holy website of all Angular knowledge. So, and it actually makes sense for, for this page, right? Because if you look at it, it's just, you know, a number of a lot of static uh, HTML pages, right? And, but you have this small, really small, like, you know, the code snippets and the slider and then everything. These are actually Angular components. And uh, Warbell and Justice Rodriguez gave a really awesome talk, um, like, um, you know, explaining how this works, how they actually managed to pull this off. So, you know, you can you can do uh, these kinds of things, but it's definitely not not a trivial thing. I actually had to watch 
uh, the talk like three times to actually understand what they're doing. But uh, it's really, really awesome. It's possible, but it's it's not it's not easy, right? So, you know, to to wrap up, um, what's the future gonna? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, what's the future gonna be like? So. Um, yeah, I'm guessing I'll, I'll stick with uh, Yoda here. We actually have no idea what um, what the you know what the future will bring. But um, you know, to end my uh, talk in a circular fashion, um, I actually encourage you to uh, take Angular components for for test drive, like like test it out. Like the Angular team is putting so much effort in giving us a lot of tools, right? But we need to take them out of the vacuum that they've been uh, developed on and battle proof them and. Uh, come up with the success stories and the failure, where it works, where it doesn't. So, you know, we can help, we can actively help the, the Google team to, uh, you know, keep improving this, uh, these tools, right? So, yeah, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>